Okay, recording. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Whoa, 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 wait. You didn't think you could just, you know, skip to this launch that's been basically a year in the making? No, no, sir. Well, I guess you can. There's timestamps below you, so you can just skip if you want. But before I show you the rest of this footage, let's talk about uh, some of the things leading up to this launch of Falcon Bobby 2.0. If you haven't been following this channel, the last flight attempt of this rocket looked like this. The rocket never got higher than the actual launch pad, and I have multiple videos on this channel previously discussing this in way more detail, so you can go watch those if you want. Basically, this rocket, the largest and most powerful one that I've ever made, uses three Estes D12 motors, and in the last flight attempt, only one of those three motors actually lit up, and it caused the rocket to kind of stay attached to the launch controller and the wire, and it was basically holding down the rocket and it couldn't get any higher. To solve this in between the last flight and this one, I decided to use a different uh, ignition system to the one I was using on the previous flight attempt. Again, I have a video in itself discussing that in way more detail. But basically all you need to know is that it was a pain to uh, get this thing uh, right. And we don't know whether it works or not because you haven't seen the footage yet unless you follow me on Instagram in which you will know the outcome of the flight. So there you go, there's a cheeky little plug. As we prepared for the second flight attempt, there were a couple changes we wanted to make to the rocket and also everything else. <laughs> the first was the launch site. Last time we chose a wind farm. It was a pretty good place in terms of being a very open space with no trees or water about. However, while setting up that day, we noticed a surprisingly large amount of people walking about the place close to where we wanted to launch from. And to be as safe as possible, we wanted to wait until most of them were a certain distance away from the rocket before launching. This delayed it for a frustrating amount of time, and on top of that, it was very windy. Who would have guessed? So that made the whole process a lot more difficult. So we decided to change the launch location this time around. We chose an abandoned quarry nearby, and it looked pretty cool. It was a lot more sheltered than the wind farm, and there was nobody walking about anywhere near. The only problem was this. The quarry was partially flooded, and I wasn't able to convince my dad to bring his inflatable boat in case the rocket landed in there. There were also more trees about the place, none too tall or widespread to cause much worry, but still something to think about. I left my f***ing jacket in the house. However, mainly because we didn't want to deal with the people walking about or the wind, we decided that this place just had more advantages compared to the previous launch location. My friend Alex had returned from last time to position his tracking camera on the edge of a cliff overlooking the quarry, while I set up some nearby cameras including the same slow-mo shot as before. If anything were to go wrong with the motors a second time round, this camera would be most useful in figuring out what exactly happened. My dad was off with his own camera in charge of recovering the rocket after landing. And with that, it was time to launch the most powerful and largest model rocket I have ever made, and hopefully, this time, it would take off successfully. Okay, recording! 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, look at that, an empty launch pad. Well, we have a decent amount to uncover this time, so let's just get straight into it. Credit where credit is due, the rocket had a very clean ascent, with all three of its motors ignited. The new ignition system finally worked, thank god. We've solved that hurdle since the last flight attempt, which is really, really good, and I'm really happy with that. You can see that the motors take a couple seconds to ignite and reach full power after the ignition tape lights up. And you can actually see one of the motors take slightly longer to reach full thrust than the other two. This is still almost instantaneous, however, and they are fully ignited by the time the rocket leaves the pad, so it doesn't really matter. The rocket ascended almost perfectly straight up. There was little to no wind that day, so that's probably why. The motors burnt out at roughly one and a half seconds into flight, and at this point, the rocket begins tipping over, and we can see the beautiful Irish country 
tide after sunset. I love putting onboard cameras on rockets, so you can really see just how high they go, and it's really, really cool. Everything's going really well so far. I mean, what could go wrong? Oh, shit. That right there is the face of a man who just realised that he put the parachute in a bit too tight. <laughs> so yeah, the parachute did not deploy. Unfortunately, either the motors didn't have enough power to push the nose cone off, or the chute was just in too tight. I wasn't too confident in the recovery system in general just because there isn't a whole lot of testing you can do on the ground to confirm that it will actually deploy. Um, compared to the motors, so it's not much surprise that it didn't work. Thankfully, the rocket landed in some branches and soil, which may have cushioned the landing a little bit. My dad managed to retrieve most of the rocket. All of the fins, poetically the one that was half-painted and had Falcon Bobby 2.0 written on it, had detached from the rocket on impact. The nose cone was nowhere to be seen. It's probably still buried under the ground in some random quarry in Ireland. $10,000 whoever can find it. The rocket was buried a few inches into the ground, so I'm surprised it remained mostly intact. The launch pad, on the other hand, is completely fine, apart from a few inevitable burn marks. In future, I do hope to continue using this launch pad, but I do have a 1550T slot rail that's used on a lot of other uh, launch pads. It could be a good alternative for smaller rockets in future. Now, you may look at this whole launch and think, that was a tremendous failure. I mean, the parachutes failed to deploy at all, the rocket crashed into the ground incredibly fast, and the nose cone is completely destroyed, and one of the fins detached. Up is the easy part, in other words. Well, what I say to that is, Falcon Bobby 2.0 has been a rocket that I have been working on for the last year or so. It's been such a process to get from January last year to where we are now in January of next year. And this wasn't even the first rocket that I made myself completely. Falcon Bobby, the first generation, had gone through two failed flights before we ever got a straight launch, and even then the parachute got ripped to pieces on the third flight. 2.0 was the way to go bigger and more powerful than I've ever gone before and it taught me a lot about rocketry in general. It was the first time I had ever modelled something in 3D and got it printed, after a failed print attempt. It was the first time I had ever made a proper recovery system, even if it didn't work. It allowed us to figure out the best way to launch three motors at the same time, which has been the largest roadblock of this entire project. This flight proved that if it doesn't work, you try something new and see if it does. And it did. All three motors lit up and had a perfect ascent. We found many bumps along the way, and this rocket is by no means perfect, I mean, the fins are probably far too big, the rocket is very heavy, and the parachute is made from a literal umbrella. However, despite all this, we've continued pushing forward. And I say we because I probably wouldn't be here without you guys watching these videos, and giving me tips in the comments. If it wasn't for you guys, I probably wouldn't have ever discovered the Klima Tape Magic Mission Tape things that allowed for the three motors in the first place. So, before I end off here, I just want to quickly talk about what I plan to do in the future with this channel. Am I going to launch Falcon Bobby 2.0 again and try and fix the parachute problem? The answer is probably not. I want to put Falcon Bobby 2.0 aside for now and start working on something new and fresh. I'd like to start work on some more like advanced things, such as a computer inside a rocket, like Raspberry Pi or Arduino or something, that can track, you know, altitude, velocity, acceleration, all that stuff. That could be pretty handy and even go as far as having a separate a mechanism for launching the parachute. Like, the computer can tell when the rocket reaches a certain altitude, and then it tells it to deploy the parachute. I don't know, that's an idea. I'd have to do a lot more research into that, and of course, if you guys have any experience with any, any of that stuff, uh, your uh, advice would be greatly appreciated. Anyway, that is everything I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for being on this journey of Falcon Bobby 2.0 with me. I know a lot of people only joined the channel while that was happening and didn't even, probably didn't even know that I had a previous generation before this or any of the rockets that I launched before Falcon Bobby 2.0. Regardless, thank you for all your help. This has been a really fun, expensive and time consuming journey, but nonetheless, it's finished now. Um, it's a bit disappointing it wasn't a hundred percent success, but really getting it in the air first was kind of the big hurdle that we managed to get across. Not sure when the next video is going to be, um, I'll keep everyone posted on Instagram. As I said, if you are following on Instagram, you will have seen the first bit of footage already, uh, the same day it happened. So I'll be posting a lot more frequently on there. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this video, and I will see you whenever.